All right, hey, what's going on? So, how many of you have had the experience of dealing with someone selfish? Right? It can be a frustrating experience. It can make you angry. Um, it can make you sad. It can make you question your relationship with this individual who only seems to care about his or her own needs and puts those above uh, those of others. All right. <clears throat> it's a difficult situation to deal with. Um, how many of you have had the experience of being called selfish, of being perceived as selfish uh, by other people? And maybe you felt, hey, you're right, I am selfish. Or maybe you felt it was unfair. Maybe you thought that you they weren't understanding your point of view whatever it is. So selfishness and this idea of selfishness and of people being selfish is a very prevalent idea and it affects a lot of us in a lot of different ways, especially with people that we either have to work closely with, with people we care about, et cetera, et cetera. And so understanding selfishness and having a new understanding, let's say updated version of selfishness can help us perceive these situations with more awareness, uh, with more tranquility and peace and love as well. And so the first thing that I would share is that we are all selfish, but that, 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 but that that's okay. In fact, it's good. It's good to be selfish. Um, it's the way that we've evolved to be. It's who we naturally are and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. In fact, a so the societies that have flourished the most, you know, when we think about capitalism, and this is another rabbit hole, but fundamentally, the idea that people act in self-interest and that a, so a society that promotes that is actually one that flourishes the most. Now, what ends up happening is there is a lot of inequality and people who are wounded or don't have their values straight and all this stuff that we'll kind of get into today leads to a lot of issues that we see in capitalism. But there's no better alternative um, to because there's no alternative truth. People are naturally selfish. And so we need to align society with that truth rather than try to deny it. And that's why in a lot of these communist experiments, it doesn't work because it requires way too much government intervention. And it's, and ultimately it's, the, I believe that capitalism is the best system, but we need to do a better job of elevating people's consciousness. And that's kind of what I'll get into today. So we are all selfish, <clears throat> but there's a difference in how we define the self, right? Even just for me or for any of us as an individual person, we have almost an infinite number of selves, right? There's me now, right? My present self, but there's also me 10 minutes from now. There's also me tomorrow. There's me a week from now. There's, there's not only present me, there's basically an infinite iterations of future me as well. And how I act, how I choose to act requires that I balance and prioritize all these different versions of me. For example, if I knew for a fact that I was going to die tomorrow, I would act in a very different way today, right? I probably wouldn't save any money if I knew for hundred percent certainty that I was going to die tomorrow. But because we have future us as future, I have future me's to contend with. I act a little bit in a different way. And that's true for everybody and different people and different personalities, you know, value the future differently. You know, typically people who are more extroverted and uh, impulsive, they, they care more about the present and that's not wrong because sometimes the future is not guaranteed. And I could, and some people who are, you know, will say, say, say for the future and then end up something happens and they, never really live because 
all they cared about was the future. So again, there's no right or wrong answer and different personalities and different uh, conditionings allow, make us act in different ways. But the, but the fundamental idea is that we all have to contend with who we are now and who we will be, right? <clears throat> then, and that's just me as a person, then kind of what, how we expand in terms of our conception of self is like when we have a family, you know, some people, when they have children, they kind of see the children as an extension of them, their children as an extension of themselves. They treat their children just as important, if not more important than themselves. They will sacrifice themselves and their own well-being for the well-being of their children. Or when they're put in a life and death situation, you know, a mother might even choose to sacrifice her own life for her kids. And so they just, you have this expansion of your perception of self. And so my contention is that we are all selfish, but we all just have a different perception of what we consider the self. For some people, it's just themselves and it's just themselves right now. And for others, it's themselves, but it's also not only themselves right now, but it's also them in the future. Then you start to expand that to include your family, to include your friends. And eventually you get to, again, the fundamental idea of spirituality, which is that we are all one, right? We are all part of this one divine energy, whether it's a simulation, whether it's, you know, just the universe, I don't know for certain, but the, the fundamental truth is that we are all one and we're all built of one thing. And so you, your, tr the transition of turning into someone who's selfless or altruistic or generous or loving is just expanding your sense of what is yourself. If you truly believe and you're able to transcend this tendency, human tendency or ego to believe that we're separate from everything and we see ourselves as all interconnected, then you're just really loving yourself. Loving everything is just loving yourself, right? It's just this ex expansion. Um, I hear, I talk a little bit about these evolved traits like generosity and how uh, with, with evolution too, you know, historically generosity also benefited yourself because prior to the age of, you know, refrigerators and stuff stuff. If you were a hunter and you hunted a big elephant, you weren't going to eat all of that yourself now and the food will go bad. So if you share it, you know, there's not, there's maybe an expectation of reciprocity. But there's also just the energy that you put into the world comes back to you. If you believe that stuff, which I do. And so, um, as friend says, there's no such thing as a selfless good deed, right? All good deeds are actually an act of selfishness, whether it makes you feel better, whether, um, <clears throat> there's not necessarily even an expectation, but just this understanding that what you put out there co comes back to you. Like, it's just, it's, it's the truth of reality. And so ultimately when we encounter people who are acting selfishly or what we consider selfishly, ah, another good point is that we can't consider or judge someone for being selfish without being selfish ourselves. And this is ties to any, anything like we can't, we can't see what we are not. And that replies to the quote unquote good or the bad, right? Because all we're seeing our external world is just a reflection of our internal world. And we can only see what we also are. So if you see beauty in the world, it's because there's some beauty within you. If you see hatred and anger and whatever in the world, it's because you have the capacity for those things as well. And when you consider someone selfish, what you're really saying is that they're not meeting your needs, right? They're not, they're concerned about themselves and they're not fulfilling something that you need or that you want. And that's you being selfish. So you can't, really judge someone or claim that someone's being selfish unless you yourself are also being selfish. And so the whole point of why I'm sharing all this is that again, in your life, when you see someone and you judge them, you notice yourself judging them or, or feeling that they're being selfish, just recognize that, okay, well, that also implies that I'm being selfish and 
you can hopefully just see that they're acting in a way that it, it reflects their understanding of what is the self and, you know, engage in that way. And, and in conjunction with, uh, like the radical honesty and nonviolent communication, you're able to talk to someone who is not meeting your needs at a certain point and express that in a way without just calling them selfish or getting angry or getting upset. Because when you come at that place, you know, as you know, if you're being called selfish, sometimes you get defensive and you're not really hearing them and then nothing gets resolved. So you're able to communicate with a bit more empathy and a bit more understanding. So I hope that helped. Uh, I haven't talked about this in a long time, so the ideas are a bit jumbled, but that's why I love to do this practice of sharing these videos. And I hope that brings you a bit more peace and, and tranquility and harmony and love in your life. All the best.